from San Francisco. Celebrating 10 years of high-tech coverage, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2019. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Hey, welcome back everyone. We're here Cube Live in San Francisco, California, VMworld 2019. We're here in Moscone North Lobby. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante, my co-host. Three days of coverage. Our next guest is Steve Wood, Chief Product Officer at Dell Boomi. Steve, thanks for joining us today. Appreciate yeah. you coming on. Thank you. So we got your event coming up in DC. The Cube will be there covering it. Correct, uh, yes. We're following you guys. Uh, interesting opportunity. You're the Chief Product Officer. You get the keys to the kingdom. You're in yes, charge. So. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, uh, yes. So Don't tell, tell us what uh, product RC. roadmap, pricing, all the analysis. <laughs> <laughs> Give, take a minute to explain Boomi real quick for the folks that might not fully understand the product sure, value. Sure, yeah, okay. yeah, absolutely. So I mean, Boomi is a platform. Uh, the goal of the platform is to solve really tough technical challenges that you often meet in order to get to a business outcome of some kind. So if I kind of brought that into maybe sharper focus, if you like. So Boomi started its life as an integration vendor. And its main goal was actually making it super easy to integrate your assets across cloud and on-prem. And that was a challenge at the time. A lot of the older integration tools weren't really ready for the cloud. Boomi uh, brought forward this awesome uh, architecture, this distribution architecture of containers that could run anywhere, integrating everything, moving your data around as needed. That's it was visionary. Of, it I was mean, super visionary. It was early days. It was yeah. like almost pre-cloud, I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually what was cool, I think, was that you got the benefits of cloud computing, but you still could run something like behind your firewall, which is a really unheard of experience, which actually starts to sound a lot, lot, lot like today with Edge, but I'll come back to that. But then we sort of expanded into B2B so you can connect to like Walmart with all those sort of traditional and sort of modern protocols, kind of stuff that's been around for a while. Uh, we launched Hub for data quality because we felt like, hey, if we're connecting all of your data together, you're probably going to find it's fairly inconsistent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we have Hub to help you manage your data quality. And then we moved into API management. We've done a huge investment this year to API enable your integrations, but also API enable your enterprise. Uh, and then uh, possibly my favorite, because it was an acquisition of my company, which is how I joined Boomi, uh, an acquisition of a, a workflow uh, business, which actually not only provides workflow for people-centric processes, so really the connecting the dots from your devices and things and your infrastructure, on-prem and the cloud, all the way up to your people, driving those end-to-end -end experiences. But we also use uh, the workflow product to help extend our existing products. Yeah. So, they're so you were building a platform. Yeah. In your other company, and now Boomi, I was on the same ethos. API-based, DevOps, complete DevOps, kind of low, no code, low code kind low of thing. Low code, yeah, for sure, absolutely, yes. What is, so, so what did you guys jump on, which wave is powering you guys now because you know, if I look at VMware for instance, they have all these acquisitions, their integration is going to be challenging. And just most enterprises that are not born in the cloud, I mean their legacy is, they got everything across uh, under the sun. They're not necessarily yeah. talking to each other. Yes. This is a huge problem. No, for sure it is, and actually it's become more of a problem as we move into machine learning and sharing data across the enterprise, giving access to the data for sure, ensuring it's controlled. Uh, so there's, there's a lot going on. I think also for us, I mean, we're seeing obviously data is getting faster. Um, you know, so as I often joke internally, nobody's asking for less data slower. <laughs> so and we don't think that like the volumes of data are going down anytime soon. So for us, it continues to be about the data. That, that for sure is the trend. The fact that it's moving faster, it's needed faster. We're going from batch to streaming, uh, going to from you know request response to real time. So what problem do you guys solve? You had to be nailed down and and and, and to give up the problem statement. What is the main problem statement that you guys are addressing today that's most relevant? Yeah, the biggest problem is actually, I would say, is just unlocking your data, but in the fastest time possible. So when Boomi kind of, I guess, does well in the market, it's because we bring kind of enterprise creds. We bring you a journey to the cloud, not a cloud-only picture. We're not like an on-prem trying to be retrofitted to the cloud. So what customers experience is they get the agility that they expect. Um, uh, so they get the value very, very fast. Um, but they're also kind of ready to kind of make that transition from you know, maybe an on-prem yeah. legacy big vendor type uh, ERP massive system to best of breed. And we you know, help them with that. Job. I always say the 
to Dave and I were chatting just earlier, DevOps is about Dev and Ops, right? Yeah. You want to have a great development environment so you can build those next gen apps, which by the way, I need data, they need machine learning, all these new things are going on within microservices that's very compelling and everyone kind of knows that already. Yeah, well, sure. They should know it, but the dev scene's looking good, CID pipelining, good scene on the dev side. It's the ops side. <laughs> so I've seen a lot of enterprise really trying to catch up their operations, which is why VMware is continuing to do well because they got operators. Mm -hmm, so I yeah. get that. Like I, they're not going to shift overnight to you know, the Nirvana, but yeah. the, the role of developing and operating that app is ultimately the core digital transformation. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Your thoughts on that and what you guys are doing? Well, part of it also, like when we looked at, uh, so uh, actually with the acquisition of uh, Flow, I think was interesting for us because it moved us also to be able to provide apps. So for example, VMware has something called Workspace ONE, which is their onboarding, helping employees onboard with an organization, connecting you to your, your endpoint applications. Uh, we actually are working with them on a similar thing. We have an onboarding solution to help employees onboard faster. Mm -hmm. Um, but part of the thing, the value that we bring is that apps have traditionally you know, been something that are heavily coded, they take a long time to do. So from integrations being heavily coded, to APIs being heavily coded, and now for us apps being heavily coded, as we kind of solve the t those tough technical challenges, everything from like mobile and offline, to you know, APIs that are scalable and robust, through to connected to all of your systems, including your things, and having the ability to do that. We kind of solve all of that, so you can focus on what you're, what you, so the true innovation, but like any cloud vendor, even if you leave it alone, it's getting faster, richer, better. So you know, it's unlike, say, coded solutions, where they kind of sort of, they, they're a snapshot of that point in time, and if you leave them alone, they kind of slowly fade fade away, was whereas Boomi, is, we're constantly modernizing what you build on our platform. So the other piece about uh, digital transformation is, is the data. Yeah. Right, and then you're talking about your data quality and information quality initiatives. Yeah. Right, that's kind of been a tailwind for you guys. So where does it all fit in terms of digital transformation, data, some of the things you were just talking about, and then the rest of the Dell family, Dell, uh, uh, VMware, how does Got it all it. fit together? Oh sure, okay, yeah, that's <laughs> a lot. But yeah, I'll see if I can list it. Well, so partly actually for, for us is like, obviously getting data out. It feels like if you're going to transform your business, you kind of would need to know what data you have. That feels like a fairly normal thing. But also, and I, I can't, I'll give you a teaser, we can't say more about it, but one of the things that's been interesting about the data on our platform, our metadata, which is anonymized, uh, we have more customers for the longest time running on our cloud service, which is a multi-tenant service, which means we see how the 9,000 plus customers work with other systems, and we have the metadata of how they architect that connectivity across the board, all the way out to people, all the way down to their infrastructure. We can see what's going on. Uh, so we've been doing a lot of research and actually le showing you more about what your business is doing, and we have some really cool announcements coming up at Boomi World. So the truth is in the data. That. I'm imagining machine learning, but you get to see the patterns. We get to see the patterns. Emerging, the signals, there are signals for you. Yes, and we're, we're seeing the patterns not only in, in what's being built and the structure of what's being built, but how it's operating, how it's being deployed, what's most successful, how those things work. So we have a really interesting sense. So when you're going through a digital transformation, we think we can show you things that you'll not have seen before. So, so what are you showing and, and to whom? Are you showing uh, it? Well, so it'll be a Booby World on the 1st to 3rd of October <laughs> okay. in Washington. Right, the, 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 uh, I, so I can't say more than that, but we're going to show them some things that our platform can extract for you that, that we, don't, we don't think any other vendor's and, done and, before. And today, um, how do you visualize that? Well, today actually we don't do that much to visualize it actually. That was actually, so we've been on a real machine learning uh, train for the past couple of years. Mm -hmm. And as we got really good at understanding the metadata that we have and we've got the data scientists involved, they started showing us more of what the art of the possible. Right. So uh, for, the, for that I'd say we've been, we've been probably remiss in not helping customers more, exposing more of those insights. Obviously from a transformation perspective, we unlock your data, but we think we can do a lot more. So is the Dell, Relationship largely a go to market one. Um, same question for VMware. Um, well, I'd say like if you think about Dell is like the you know the, I guess uh, the sort of unofficial so the hardware part of the triangle. VMware being the sort of don't tell them that. Yeah, sorry, but it's true. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I didn't really say that. Sorry, Michael. Uh, but it's the hardware side. Then VMware, you've got the kind of infrastructure, DevOps, operational side, yeah. and then Boomi brings you the data. And we think that that kind of triangle is kind of what you need to go through a digital transformation. Certainly if your title is And Michael, Michael Dell's bullish on you guys. He was at um, your last event we broadcasted. He sees you guys as modern SaaS 
interface for yeah. companies for, certainly from a transformational standpoint, yeah. as the interface in for integration. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it will, uh, I guess, I mean, our, our performance speaks to that. I mean, we've been a very, very high performing. I don't want to say we're the number one performing uh, technology in this portfolio, but it's certainly, uh, it's either. Oh, well, you're up and to the right why, in that yeah. quadrant thing. Why are customers, yeah, yeah. what's, yeah. what's, what's the winning formula? Why are you winning these deals? Why are you winning customers? Why are you keeping customers? What's the real value that they're getting out of Boom? Uh, so our CMO would want me to say business outcomes accelerated, which is, uh, <laughs> I hope check. I get a tag Got that down, yeah, yeah, that's that's good. Yeah, yeah, Gold thanks. star for you, thank go. You, thank you, Now the uh, truth. Yeah, now the truth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's actually, but it is like uh, time to value. I mean, our, our customers, th that, that's the, because, We've solved the challenges, sure. Other vendors could say we've solved the challenges too, but we've solved it in a low-code way, and customers see the value very, very quickly. So when we go, you know, head to head with a competitor on a deal, you know, like a bake-off, yeah. if you like, we we win pretty much every time. Take a minute to explain what low-code is for the folks that are been debating what low-code is. There's been a lot of Twitter uh, wars on this, but sure. explain what low-code is. I will give my explanation. <laughs> so the so the, the so low-code fundamentally is the idea that, you know. Uh, I'd say like the first phase almost of cloud was like, hey, you're not going to code anything. The new paradigm is it's all point and click in Salesforce, which actually I used to be at Salesforce. I sold my last company to Salesforce. Um, it was all about kind of like the no code approach. But I think the reality is, is like there's different ways in which you can be pro productive. Sometimes point and click is by far the most productive, but it is not always the most productive way to solve a problem. Sometimes code is by far the most productive way to solve a problem. So when you provide a low code platform, what you're really thinking about is productivity for everybody. Not just the point and click, drag and drop ease of use, but also productivity for the developer. So when they engage and they're working together to deliver a solution, it's, it's highly productive. For instance, wiring up APIs is a great example, or managing containers might be a great use case of low code. Yeah. No code would be just, you know, more automation behind the simple stuff. Yeah. But low code is really more stitching stuff together. Yeah, and sometimes people do associate it more with the application creation side, but I often think of it as like a role thing. It's like, you, if you think about like your company, one solution to solve the kind of app gap yeah. or the, the gap in all the stuff in your backlog that needs yeah, to be yeah. done is to hire more IT people. The other way to solve the problem is to empower everybody you have to do more with technology. So I often think about it as like, you know, software eating the world, you know, a lot of people are on the wrong side of that equation. You know, they're, well, they're if you talk to people who are cloud native or born in the cloud, their IT is the developer. Yeah. I mean, they're the ones managing the configurations and it's all either scripted away and or written code for what was IT's job? Yeah, you say a lot of people on the wrong side of that equation. You mean customers? No, I mean, well, it mean, people inside the business are often like, you know, they've got a whole bunch of stuff they want to do with technology, right. but there's a gatekeeper, and that gatekeeper is the developer. And it's not that they want to be a gatekeeper. It's that they need, you need tools to be able to do it. They want to be sure the architecture is right. So low-code platforms are all about kind of bringing more people into the conversation. So I often think about it as like, take the business, and so say your ideas don't now get translated through a whole bunch of series yeah. of weird things. You can now be very engaged in the creation process. So it's domain yeah. expertise meets coding capability. It reminds me of the old yeah. 4GL days back in the 80s. You know, yeah. you had interpreters, scripting languages, kind of higher level of abstractions. Yeah. But the underlying language, is hardcore compiler, object code, you know, all yeah. that stuff under the covers has to be there, right? That's, you're For putting sure, that yeah. abstraction on top, making it easy to yeah, code. Yeah, absolutely, because I mean, like what you deploy has to be credible. So sometimes what the, what the low code vendors are after is something where an architect would go, love that. That thing is great. I love the way it's put together. It's well architected, well put together, and I can code around it to finish those last mile issues and yeah. kind of, you know, add my shine to it. Because they know what they're dealing with. Yeah. Under the covers, at least. But yeah, but a lot of like you know the sort of no code vendors kind of went for architecturally slightly curious routes and didn't necessarily think about the whole picture. So you guys are all, all about dealing with all this complexity, helping people manage that at yeah. least in part. How about some of these new innovations that are coming out? I mean, the world's crazy about ML, AI, blockchain. Sure you know, all kinds of new automations. Where do you guys fit into that? Is that an opportunity for you? Yeah, I mean, well, so machine learning, we're all, oops, sorry, I'm trying to spill my water. We're all, we're all crazy about machine learning as well. Yeah. So we, we're using it a lot, as I mentioned on our metadata, but also we see a lot of our customers using our technology to get the data out mm -hmm. in order to surface new insights. So for example, we've got like, actually, actually Jack in the Box would be a, an interesting example of kind of emerging technology. One is that they're using our technology to get data out at the point of sale. 
So they have to use our technology is running at the point of sale. They have 2,200 plus locations, which means we have to be able to run out there on the edge and process it right at the point of sale. But they're trying to do things like, you know, when you drive up and your license plate is scanned, they know who you are and then go, hey, do you want those, you know, that, that, that same meal again? And, you know, they, so they can predict what you want. They can help make suggestions for you. Um, so that's a fantastic example. So, yeah. yeah. Great edge use cases, I mean, yeah. that's awesome. And which was one of the, but there's also, machine learning for us, is, is, we're, we're tied with machine learning. And we are exploring the idea of actually providing machine learning as a service to our customers. That's something we're just, we're sort of eyeing that up as we've been doing more and more internally. But, but, but blockchain's the same, and we see customers playing with blockchain all the time. And actually, I, I guess our pitch to customers who are looking at emerging technology is we have a group that is looking specifically at emerging technology, mm -hmm. and because of our time to value, and because often emerging technology is like, so what does blockchain mean to, I don't know, um, uh, you know, well, you guys, Cube, supply chain. You know, yeah. like, how would you use it? You might want to experiment with it. So we have a Cube coin. You have a Cube and coin. And we yeah. have a reputation protocol. We'd have a community software layer. It's actually, working. I would track the supply chain. Coin? I already built it. You so. built, okay, <laughs> it's in, it's okay. in tech preview. Hopefully, you right did now. it on Boomi. No, no, it's, <laughs> no, but I mean, like, the, the success or maybe failure of Cube coin. I don't want to call it, but you know, like, it's not a utility token. We're going maybe you see not. Right. <laughs> yeah, but like, but like a lot of customers want to build to experiment. So time to value is really important, and so we've we're solving those problems in those emerging technology yeah, rapid de application development in uh, DevOps using containers, APIs, yeah. very friendly. Try it out and then see like this All right, so you've got the event coming up October 1st to the 3rd in Washington, D.C., yes. get a plug for that. I might have mentioned it, The Cube yeah. will be there. You're holding back on some of the, the good um, stuff. Yeah. The, the, the good items, we'll yeah. wait for then. Yeah, yeah, otherwise, yeah. <laughs> wait for the keynote, then you'll see it, yes. <laughs> and we, they all want to know now, come yeah. on. <laughs> now they're all like, no, don't say anything. Yeah. All right, we'll leak it out on Twitter later if yeah. I find out, no. Yeah. No. Steve, thanks for coming on, sharing the insight. We're looking forward to chatting more at uh, Boomi World Sounds good. in Washington, D.C. I'm Jeffrey Dave Vellante. More live coverage here in San Francisco for VMworld 2012 after this short break. <laughs>